I'm going to teach you to skyrocket your guitar playing this week in two minutes a day with this easy exercise. And it all has to do with how your brain functions and how your brain talks to your hands. So let's dive into it. And if you stick around to the end, I'm actually going to give you a harder version and an easier version. So if you're struggling with this exercise that I give you, which is already pretty easy, I've got a step easier. And if you're doing great with it, a step harder. What we're going to do is we're going to line up on 5th fret, 6th fret, 7th fret, and 8th fret. Our fingers are all in a line. I'm on the 3rd string. This doesn't even really use my right hand. It's just a left hand exercise, getting my fingers under control so that I can change and play these weird chords much more quickly and easily and comfortably. So I'm on fret 5, 6, 7, and 8 of the 3rd string. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my index finger one string towards the ceiling, and my middle finger one string towards the ground. So I'm on fourth string with my pointer finger. I'm on second string with my middle finger. And they're just staying on their respective frets, five, six, seven, and eight. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip flop my middle finger and my index finger. So I switched them, they started here on string four and string two, and then I switched them so I'm on string two and then four. And I'm going to do this maybe 10 times, back and forth, back and forth. Now I'm leaving my third and fourth fingers down. You see they're parked on the third string. I'm just kind of jumping over third string, and I might do this 10 times. Then I'm going to line up in my original position all on the third string, and I'm going to start using my pointer finger and my ring finger to do the same thing. So pointer will go to the fourth string, ring finger will go to the second string. This time my middle finger and pinky stay parked, as I flip flop my pointer and my ring finger. And I would just go through and do this with every string set or every finger set, say 10 times. So now I'm gonna do pointer and pinky. Once I do pointer and pinky, again, I do that 10 times. Now I'm gonna move on to ones with my middle finger. So middle and ring, back and forth, right? Then I can do middle and pinky. And then finally I can do ring finger and pinky. Right? And so why does this work so well? What we're doing is we're connecting our brain to our fingers. See, when we start playing guitar, we usually think and people tell us, hey, I gotta develop more flexibility in my fingers. I gotta stretch. I gotta develop more strength to push down the strings. I gotta develop more, you name it. But the real trick is our brain sees our hand as a grasping mechanism, right? Our brain wants to grab things with our thumb and our middle finger. That's what our brain is mapped to. When you say, okay, brain, do this, and I'm grabbing something, right? My brain is sending a thumb and a middle finger a signal. But now when we're playing guitar, we want to use all four fingers, move our thumb, and do each independently but our brain's not used to sending that signal. So when we're doing this exercise, what I'm doing is I'm sending a signal to two fingers to move, just like I'm doing when I make a chord. But I'm also sending a signal to those two fingers that are staying put. All four fingers are getting a signal, but it's usually a lot easier than playing some chords that are brand new to us or that are difficult to change or hard to grab out of nowhere. This starts to build that connection between our brain and our fingers really, really well. This is the number one exercise for making chords, whatever it is, whether it's complicated, you know, cool jazzy sounding chords, or it's your really simple, you know, open C, open D, doesn't matter. This is what is going to make playing chords much, much easier. We're shortening the distance between our brain having an idea and our fingers listening to that idea and doing it. So I promised you I would give you an easier version and a slightly harder version. So the easier version is we just do the same thing, only I'm just kind of walking one finger back and forth, right? I'm, I'm going to the fourth string with my index, back to the second, back, fourth, second, and I can do that with each individual finger. If you're really struggling, this can really help. And if you're having trouble getting one of your fingers to move, typically it's our ring finger that is less cooperative. Sometimes it's our pinky. So our pinky's the weakest, but our ring finger and our middle finger share a tendon. We actually have three tendons in the middle of our wrist, right, that come out um, to go to our fingers. Our index finger and our pinky each have their own, and our uh, ring finger and our middle finger share the tendon. It splits off in the middle of your wrist and then goes to each individual finger. But I just told you that our middle finger is our brain's favorite finger. So so our middle finger tends to cooperate, but our ring finger tends to lag behind a little bit. So if you're really struggling, maybe getting the ring finger to move, what I imagine is that I'm squeezing extra hard with my first, second, and pinky fingers, 
while I'm doing that ring finger when I'm first trying to get it worked out. Now, I don't want to squeeze extra hard when I play. I actually really want to have ultimately a very light touch on the instrument. But for the purpose of getting a finger to cooperate, sometimes squeezing harder on the ones we aren't trying to move, to get our brain to keep them in place can be a huge help. Now, to make it a little bit harder, what we can do is we can actually bring this back to the first fret or, you know, starting at the fifth, we could go back to the fourth, back to the third. And then instead of doing, say, a uh, second uh, string and fourth string, right, which is what we were doing before, I'm actually going to go all the way from sixth to first. So this is causing me to do bigger movements. And you'll see, especially as we get to some of these um, further on fingers, like using your ring finger and your pinky, this gets really difficult to do, right? But it's still a great exercise. So don't just dive off the deep end and start doing that one. Start with this one. It's all about the brain hand connection. And then as you get better, bring it further back, you know, further to the lower frets and wider um, on the string. So, you know, do, fifth and second, or fifth and first, and then finally sixth and first. But again, slow going, slow going. I mean, give yourself a couple months just doing this one and you'll see how great it works. And you'll see results just this week doing it. If this was helpful for you, please come join my free course and community on school.com slash guitar. It's school with a K.com slash guitar. I'll leave a link in the description. I walk you through how to play an entire song. I've got practice along tracks. You can just hit play, play what I'm playing, get better at guitar, and we're doing it all together. Ask questions, get feedback, and make progress on guitar. Again, that's schoolwithak.com slash guitar, and I'll leave a link down in the description.